<coughs> Excuse me. Well, I don't know how well this is going to show. I hope that uh, the white of this page doesn't sort of blind you at all, but we'll see. So that's my daughter's drawing. As you can see, uh, we decided to get rid of this. I felt that on a painting this small, in this particular case, to have a landmass coming in slightly in the foreground here, then this directs you into here. This directs you into here. Our focal point is somewhere back there. Pulls too much interest into the distance. So we, I remove that, and 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 in doing so, it, you know, more attention is drawn to this area. Um, this tree is a little what airy, a little a little thin, you know. So we're going to thicken the trunk, make it a little more muscular. The spacing of the foliage, I think, could be tightened up a little bit. I'd like to group them a little more solidly. Um, so anyway, as I mentioned yesterday, I think, uh, we make some minor changes to it. We'll just kind of try to uh, maintain the, the, the feel of the thing. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit of... Uh, Hmm, I don't know if, what, what brush I should use here. Yeah, the brush is a little on the big side. I'll use it anyway. Going to mix a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. And some turpentine. Or paint thinner, I suppose. Uh, to draw in our dark lines. So once again, you know, we have our first sketch, then I scratch this in in charcoal, slowly improving it, uh, hopefully. And now, bringing it closer to our wash-in stage. That's all right. I'm a bit thick. A little bit of foliage behind that branch. We want this tree to look like it's had a rough life. That is character. That is what gives it character. Now, by the time we've gotten to this stage of the image, We've deviated greatly from the actual photograph. But, you know, as, as with when you're plein air painting, um, the actual scene is rarely the scene that you end up with. You can almost always uh, improve on it, composition-wise, or what have you. It's rare that nature provides you with the perfect composition. And, again, it's about the painting. This is about the painting. I'm no Puritan. I'm no idealist. Okay, I'm going to paint all the foliage and the trunks dark. Because, as you know, I usually cut into these things with the sky and the hills behind it. Okay, that's very thick. It's not going to stay that thick. In fact, just... I think I will just take a little of this and we'll thin it off right away. Okay, nope. We're not we're not finishing anything here, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay. A bit of rock going in behind there.
the rock in front of it. Where the rock meets the water. In the drawing you can see that it generally does this. But I think in this case I would prefer to keep a, just a, more or less a straight line right across there. So you don't have the appearance of looking down at the shoreline so much as you do looking across at the shoreline. It may be technically inaccurate, but I think for the sake of looks, again, on a, on a, on a, on a panel this small, it's best if we just leave it straight like that. Here, I'm going to cut down just a bit, just a bit on that one. How about that? Okay. Now those distant hills. I will ultramarine blue and a, a little bit of ultramarine blue sorry I'm mumbling again I'm always mumbling add a little bit of white too because those distant lines uh, I don't want them to be quite as strong as the foreground ones and we have all our ups and downsies more in the foreground I would like to tame the background I don't want mountains showing really Again, on a large painting, that's a different story, but this is in the nature of a study. So we're going to keep it simple. And I may as well just paint that in as well. I may as well paint in that with a wash. Now, my daughter had requested a blue sky. We're going to have blue skies but variations of blue, you know, hinting at some distant cloud or what have you in the sky. So, I think what I'll do is, I'm not going to wash my brush out, I'm just going to go back to my, to the, um, what's this stuff, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, which makes us a bit on the green side. As you can see, the values on this wash it are going to end up making the paint the painting appear to be quite quite dark for the moment, which is fine. It's just for the moment. Okay, stepping down a little bit there. Stepping down, but not angling down. I want to maintain those horizontal lines. My left arm's a bit screwed up right now, so I'm a little bit slow with doing this stuff. Uh, Get the dirty stuff off of there. 
and 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 maybe I'll put a little bit of cobalt blue on there. Not a pile, just enough to get our sky washed in. Cobalt blue will be the base color for that. And I think a bit of raw umber for these rocks on the right hand side. We'll wash in with that. When it's wet, it looks all quite dark, but when this wash-in has dried up, the, uh, the actual colors will sort of come into their own a little bit. Okay, let's start with the little umber. high values. Certainly not on the washing. We'll reserve that for highlights in the final painting. so much a wash as a squeeze. And I don't have any white at all on my palette. Let me just squeeze a little bit out onto that. If I go straight cobalt blue out of the tube, that's just, that's just a little too dark. It's just our washing, it's just our guide. Our values are going to be bumped up significantly in certain areas on this little on this little study when we're done. Now wipe off the wipe off the titanium white that I of course got all over my fingers. I like to I like to wipe wipe my hands off, wash my, wipe my hands off as I go because otherwise things got get away on you and before you know it you've got paint on your face and on your shoulders and on the ceiling you know on, on passing cars on the neighbor's house it just gets carried away I think what I'll do is in general for this washing for, for this washing I'm going to add a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson we'll go a little mauve I don't want that blue to be too strong. Although when painting it in, I will more than likely I will more than likely put in a few pretty strong strokes of it. We have this going on. Let's do let's have this going on in the sky a little bit, okay? Slightly and the color slightly. As you can see, it's not much. Okay, and again, more cobalt blue. Just cobalt blue, nothing else. No more lizard and crimson. I'm trying to clean that up now. is pretty flayed. It's pretty splayed, I should say. 
Let's see if I can do a reasonable job of cutting around the edges of this tree without making too much of a mess. Yeah, I'm picking up some of the dirty colors. I don't care. It's fine. Again, it's just a wash in. But I should probably pick up another brush before I do the actual painting on here. I like the appearance of loose, but I need a brush that I can accurately portray looseness. You like the look of a happy accident, but you can't rely on accidents. If you do that, you're doomed before you start. Those are just bonuses. See, we have something going on in the sky there. It doesn't have to be much. It can be very subtle. But it's nice to have something. Or it ends up looking like a poster, not a painting. There it is. That didn't take long. This won't take long, did it? Okay, that's it for now, guys. We'll, we'll uh, get to painting that next time around. Actually, maybe what I'll do is remove this so it doesn't fool the camera. And I'll back the camera up a little bit here so that you can get a good square on view of what I'm up to. I know it's not much, but with the camera square on, you get a better idea of the shapes and proportions. Okay, talk to you soon.